Hi guys, my name is Roger, and I'm building a mid-engine supercar in the basement of my home. Let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. Well, to start off with this week, I want to show you what I've accomplished, some things I've been working on. This is the quarter-scale hood that I've made, and you can tell that it turned out okay. Um, up here at the top, if I can get the reflection on it, I, there's a place up there, an area that I polished just to see how how nice and clear the finished carbon fiber would show up once this uh, part was polished and it looks really nice I'm um, actually very happy with that there was one problem while I was making this part and I accidentally let epoxy get to the very top and it reached my vacuum pump and locked up so the vacuum pump quit working and lost vacuum on the part and the only thing I could do while that happened was just let the part completely dry. And once it dried, I removed it from the from the mold. The uh, the mold is sitting over here against the wall. You can see that it pretty much destroyed the mold when I removed the part from it. But this part looks good from the outside. The only problem with losing vacuum was on the back side. You can tell the shiny areas here where the peel ply wasn't touching. It wasn't holding a vacuum on the part very well you can see some areas here where the carbon fiber just wasn't sucked up against the mold really tight and the peel ply wasn't touching here so there are some issues on the back side but other than those few issues the, the the peel ply left a nice consistent finish like it should and everything looks pretty good but even with all of that the front side of the part looks really nice uh, i think it would be something that would be easy to paint and finish or polish if it was left natural and it would look good also now on the vacuum pump I here it is I did manage to salvage the pump although it had enough epoxy in it to lock it up and and it completely shut off um, what I did was take it apart into millions of pieces yeah, maybe that's an exaggeration. There were quite a few pieces. And clean epoxy out of it. And this is the epoxy that came out of it. See, it was completely full of epoxy. Some places it would it had mixed with the oil and turned into a foamy solution. And other places it was just locked up solid. And the flywheel and the little fins that create the vacuum, the little blades inside, had locked up completely. I had to take an arbor press and actually press them out and scrape epoxy off of every part and put it back together but i did manage to get this working again i haven't put the gauge on it yet to test it but i think it'll be fine it does create a vacuum and i think everything is okay on that and i managed to salvage it which is good it came from uh, somewhere in europe and it was about 300 dollars. i wasn't wanting to throw it away and buy a newing after one use so I was lucky to save that there is epoxy inside my tubing, inside my vacuum gauge, and I need to replace both of those, but it's going to be a while before I make another part, so I'm not in a hurry to do that. I didn't take a video of the vacuum process because I wasn't sure what I was doing. I didn't know how smooth it would go, but I did take some pictures, and you can see the process of the epoxy infusing the layup, and you can see it rising from the bottom of the mold all the way to the top and then once it got to the top that's when the vacuum pump locked up and it shut off but normally instead of the vacuum pump locking up you would just shut the vacuum line off uh, to the epoxy cup and just hold a vacuum on the part while it set up and dried and since we're going to be making a new car body design uh, we are, i was struggling with the size of the C7 rear glass. Uh, Fatal was having some issues getting the body design to work correctly because of the length of the glass. So I decided to purchase a rear glass out of a C8 Corvette, which is the one you see in the front. You can see that the C8 rear glass is quite a bit smaller than the C7 in width and length, and it has kind of a cool shape to it. So this is the glass we're gonna use in the rear. I'm going to just sell the C7 glass, I guess and um, i need to model this c8 rear glass i will uh, get my uh, piece of wood set up and and a grid drawn on it and uh, plot out all the points around the perimeter of this glass like i did on the windshield and back glass for the c7 
I'll model it the same way. That gives me a pretty accurate representation of the curvature and the uh, overall perimeter shape. So that's something I'll be doing uh, actually tomorrow. Now part of the process of modeling the rear windshield is once I get it modeled, I will cut a, a pattern or a plug here on the CNC, which is what you can see here. And what this does is it has the shape of the perimeter of the glass and it is also cut to the curve of the glass. So once this is finished, I can drop the glass down in this pocket here and make sure that the overall shape is correct. And then it'll make sure that it also sits on this ledge all the way around to see that I have the curvature correct of the glass. And I need to prove that out before we use the glass in the uh, 3D model to make the body design around. You can see the plug over here in the center that was cut out. And I dropped this glass in here and it doesn't quite fit. My, uh, I mirrored the part and my center line, which I mirrored from is off just slightly. One half of the glass fits in there correctly, but the entire glass won't fit. So I need to adjust the center line of the part slightly and recut this. But uh, this is necessary to do to ensure that the uh, model of the glass is perfect before we use it. I'll also need to do this with the windshield, which is going to be a challenge because the windshield is so big and curved. There's probably going to be a, a four-part, at least four-part mold that I need to create and assemble to test fit the shape of it in. And that is probably what's coming next once I get this correct and finished. I uh, definitely need to verify that the windshield shape and size is correct before we use it in the car. Okay, so in last week's video I told you that we were going to start over and make a new car body design. And I showed you three new car body designs, but one of them really wasn't practical. So what we did was we narrowed it down to two. And this is the first one, the orange car. And this was the second one, the silver car. And I asked you guys to give me feedback on which one you thought was better in the comments section. And I also post these videos on Billy Billy, which is a Chinese website similar to YouTube. My wife translates these videos into Chinese and I post them there. And uh, I got feedback from YouTube and Billy Billy and it was unanimous on both websites that the silver car was the one that was preferred. And I also agree, after seeing all the car renderings, the silver one is also my favorite. And it was even before the feedback came in. Now, I am going to use the silver car, and that's what we're going to go with. But I am also going to modify it slightly, make a few changes. I may even incorporate a few little details off of the orange car on the hood around the front end of the air intakes it for the radiators. There are a couple of things I may steal from the orange car and move over to the silver car. I guess that's going to be about it for this week's video. I actually accomplished more this week than I thought I would. Things have went well and I will keep working on this uh, rear glass design trying to get this uh, model correct where the uh, glass fits in the pattern like it should. And once we finish that I'll move on to the windshield. But that's going to be it for this week's video, and I'll see you guys again next week.